3.3 seconds covers the top six in this amazing race. So, Hakkinen now, right behind Jacques Milner with just a few corners to go. Round the left-hander, Vicker, Vicker Hakkinen can see that victory, beckoning him. Look how close it is. He's got two chances, a small one into the air in Senna Chicane, and then a big last grasp. is second for McLaren. Jack Villeneuve is third for Williams and for Renault. So Renault failed to win their last Grand Prix. Gerhard Berger fourth, Eddie Irvine fifth, Hytel Frenson sixth, and 4.5 seconds covers the first six. And look at the joy, the unbounded joy in the Williams area with their new world champion, Jack Villeneuve from Canada. The first McLaren 1-2 since Japan 91. Don't ask me to explain that last lap. It appeared to me as if Villeneuve was just backing off and letting the two McLarens through. In three wonderful combinations up front. First and second, third and fourth, fifth and sixth. And behind them, Alexander Wurtz, Damon Hill and Olivier Panis complete what looked like being nine finishers of the Australian Grand Prix at Melbourne in 1998. Hakkinen, I wonder if he's actually going to give us a smile in the interview room. He wasn't very communicative before the race began. And Hakkinen now is past the powerhouse into turn 13 in this 15-corner circuit. The left-hand at turn 15 where so many people went off in practice is this one. He's got the last corner coming up now. And whatever, it's a famous, famous victory for McLaren Mercedes and for Bridgestone. It's the first Bridgestone Grand Prix victory. Not only first, but second as well. Mika Hakkinen wins. There are the euphoric McLaren Teamsters. And in the background, you see Frenson and Irvine finishing third and fourth, a lap down. Now we just wait for Villeneuve and Herbert to see who is going to be fifth and sixth. Well, a formation finish there for the McLarens. Mika Hakkinen taking his second win in Formula One. Uh, we have to wait and see why he ended up in the pit lane. Otherwise, it's his uh, second extremely lucky win. But uh, Ron there will uh, be explaining. I'm sure the press are going to be after Ron to understand exactly what's happening. Yeah, there would be an uproar if it did, because it would obviously be a deliberate flouting of the authority of the FIA by the team. And there's already been a bit of a run-in over the uh, brakes situation. Yes, Hakkinen's slowing. Hakkinen's going very carefully. It is the last lap of the Grand Prix. He's going very carefully. He's half throttle through there. Well, are we seeing something dramatic in the last few yards of this race? One way or the other, we're going to know the answer soon because Hakkinen is climbing Hacken up slowing. towards the finish. He's slowing down. And look at Coulthard. Drill him, are DC. We, are we going to see it again? I can hardly believe it. Hacken no, Hakkinen's on no, it again. He's got back on the throttle. It's going to be mighty, mighty close, though. The crowd is roaring, and you can understand why. But it's Interlagos. Mika Hakkinen wins. David Coulthard is second. And out goes Mika Hakkinen's hand. Well, who knows what the situation was inside those two cars. But the result is the same as it was in Jerez, as it was in Australia. McLaren Mercedes Bridgestone win for the third successive race as far as the car engine and tyre combination is concerned. Uh, engine, I'm sorry. Schumacher is third, or will be when he comes in. There he is.
He's almost with inside the rail, and he is six seconds ahead of Alexander Vogts. There's Hacken in there just lining up the formation finish with the McLaren Mercedes Benz. Number eight coming in. And he is going to extend his world championship lead. He's taken Micah Hacken and, and Hack McLaren. Mercedes, a long time to come good, but my goodness, they've well and truly come good, and this is the living proof, because he is now down to one of the closing corners of the race. He's coming up towards turns 11 and 12, and then down the hill to turn 13, which is the last corner of the Catalonia circuit, and Mika Hakkinen drops down the hill now, turns in for the last time. He'll see the grid in front of him. He'll see the chequered flag in front of him. And he does so now. And Mika Hakkinen wins the Spanish Grand Prix. Ten points for McLaren, for Mercedes and for Bridgestone. And he only three, four cars are going to finish this race. Look at them streaming across the line. They're finishing their race one lap short. David Coulthard will finish in second position. In fact, he has done so. Barrichello taking the fifth place. Two world championship points for the Stewart team. There'll be enormous relief there. Villeneuve finally taking the, uh, well, taking the final point, I should say, in sixth place. Johnny Herbert not quite making it stick. There's nothing more frustrating than finishing a Grand Prix in seventh place. It means absolutely nothing. Well, once again, Ferrari reliability has paid off for Michael Schumacher. He crosses the line in third position, which realistically was the best he could hope for, as was starting third on the grid. Mika Hakkinen that we're with now has now extended his world championship lead over his teammate David Coulthard to seven points. and is now on his last lap, climbing Beau Rivage, turning into Casino Square. The gap is down to 12 seconds, and Prince Albert and his Serene Highness Prince Rainier are watching, as they always do, the Monaco Grand Prix from the Royal Box, as Mika Hakkinen, Victoria Shawley, drops down to Lowe's. Fisichella is 12 seconds behind him, and the fastest lap is still that of Mika Hakkinen who can afford to metaphorically coast through the tunnel. No need to go through at 170 miles an hour there. He is on his last lap. The man who won in Australia. The man who won in Brazil. The man who finished second in Argentina and who won the Spanish Grand Prix. He's only failed to score in one race this year, and that was the San Marino Grand Prix. And he's going to be 10 points more for Mika Hakkinen, dramatically to increase his world championship lead over David Coulthard, who failed to finish the race, of course. Michael Schumacher, who fails to finish the race. And out of the rat pass comes Mika Hakkinen. He'll go past the McLaren mechanics who were showing the board. There it is. And there go the waves. And Mika Hakkinen wins at Monaco. 10 world championship points to increase not only his world championship lead, but the world championship lead in the Constructors' Championship of McLaren. And Fissi Keller takes second place, a fine second place for Benetton. Well, we've talked about the marvellous drive from Coulthard and Michael Schumacher, but remember, this man really has driven a faultless race. Got himself somewhere up the front in qualifying yesterday in the tricky conditions and has just made the best of everything all afternoon. And uh, it's going to be yet another glorious victory for Mika Hakkinen. He's let the Jordan go. I don't know whether they're going to line up for a formation finish with the Silver Arrows, but Mika Hakkinen clearly can almost freewheel home from there. Not long to go now, out of turn six, down to turn seven, over the hill, turn in right at 120 miles an hour. Mika Hakkinen is almost literally within sight of his fifth win of the year to extend his world championship lead, and Hakkinen wins 
closer slowly in Austria and we now wait for his teammate David Coulthard to come through a magnificent second there he is in the background a great dominant victory for McLaren Mercedes and Bridgestone with Michael Schumacher in third position when he finishes because he is some 32 seconds behind Mika Hakkinen Well, Villeneuve's not going to let these two cruise the last lap very much. Look at him pushing like crazy. The two McLarens there, just 2.9 seconds over the start-finish line was Jacques Villeneuve behind. I think he's much closer now, and really, they can't give him too much of a chance. They've got to keep pushing. There's one back marker ahead. He may not come into play before the end of the lap, but Villeneuve going to keep those guys looking in their mirrors right until the chequered flag. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, Hacken and Coulthard will have had a radio message, of course, to tell them to be careful about Villeneuve coming up behind them. They enter the motodrome for the 50, 45th and virtually certain victorious time round the sax curve up to the Opel curve, the right-hander, which is turn 14 out of 15. Mika Hakkinen is coming through to win his sixth win of 1998, the seventh of his career. Hakkinen wins in Germany. Coulthard is second in Germany. McLaren Mercedes are first and second. And Williams are now back in contention. A superb third for Jacques Villeneuve, only 2.1 seconds behind the winner. Damon Hill gets his first World Championship points of the year. Fourth place, Michael Schumacher finishes second, two points for Ferrari. There he is, acknowledging the cheers of the crowd. And his brother, Ralph Schumacher, unless he has terrible luck in the closing yards of the German Grand Prix, is going to finish sixth. And that's the first time, of course, that Jordan will have had both their drivers in the points this year. to see their man come home against, it has to be said, expectations. Mika Hakkinen has risen to a very difficult occasion, absolutely brilliantly. Michael Schumacher is only going to be about three seconds behind him, but that is more than enough, because there is Hakkinen, there is Michael Schumacher, getting closer and closer all the time, but it's really all up for the German, and it's all to go for, for the Finn, Mika Hakkinen, into the chicane and out of the last corner and Mika Hakkinen, McLaren Mercedes is going to win and indeed does win the Luxembourg Grand Prix and he wins it by just 2.2 seconds from Michael Schumacher an exultant Finn he's uh, a pretty dour, quiet bloke but uh, I think he's going to show some emotion when he gets out of the car after having magnificently, superbly won this race against such tremendous pressure. And of course, the psychological situation is reversed now because Mika Hakkinen has got a five-week gap with a four-point lead over Michael Schumacher in the World Championship and McLaren in a very strong position to win the Constructors' Contest. Yes, and um, probably more importantly, is he can afford to finish second to Michael Schumacher in, in uh, Japan and still win the championship by dint the fact of having more second places. Constructors' Championship for McLaren, Drivers' Championship for Mika Hakkinen, Eddie Irvine still continuing to close, but the gap now of 11 and a half seconds is, as I said, because Mika Hakkinen knows exactly what the score is and is taking it comparatively easy. Yeah, it has to be said, Irvine's done a great job today. Always seems to be the bridesmaid, unfortunately, uh, especially this year. But Eddie Irvine, yet another podium position, just 11 seconds off the lead, and really he's done everything Ferrari could have asked of him. Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard making it almost a clean sweep for McLaren. First and third. Here he is, here is the flying Finn as he signs himself when you ask him for his autograph. Mika Hakkinen, the flying Finn. He never spoke a truer word. Up to the 130R for the last time. Down to the chicane for the last time. Down through the gears. The gearbox has seen him fine this time. 
Those were his only troubles he had in 1998, but not in the Japanese Grand Prix. Mika Hakkinen exits the chicane well, from by here, going Murray. round the left-hander. It's, it's all literally. downhill, he can cruise from there. He's got his hand in the air, Number takes one. him over the line. Mika Hakkinen literally goes downhill to victory. Look at the joy, the euphoria of the McLaren team on the left. And you are looking at the world champion of 1998. And a very worthy one as Eddie Irvine finishes second, a mere 6.4 seconds behind the race winner, Mika Hakkinen. David Coulthard finishes in third position and 22 seconds behind Mika Hakkinen. So it's 14 points for McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. They only needed one to win it. And that was a hot race, Murray. It was over two and a half minutes faster than last year's dry race, although they were messing around at the beginning. So uh, a very quick race, too. Mika Hakkinen, world champion, 14 points ahead of Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard retains his third position and Irvine his fourth place. Jack Fielder, fifth in the World Championship that he won last year. Anyway, Mika Hakkinen is now with very much on target for his 10th Grand Prix win of his career in his 114th Grand Prix. He's driven as ever, a fine race. Now there is Takagi getting out of shape in the background. You saw Michael Schumacher, but whilst it's certainly going to be a win if Hakkinen can just finish these last few corners for McLaren, that's going to be 10 World Championship points for them. Ferrari are going to be very much in the ascendancy in the Constructors' Championship. Eddie Irvine is still just a few tenths of a second behind Ralph Schumacher in fifth position, but Michael Schumacher looks as though he's going to finish in second place, and Ferrari look as though they're going to be on uh, eight World Championship points. And Mika Hakkinen goes round the duck bill, drops down hill up to the Mergulo now climbing that is turn 11 downhill a bit now now he starts the climb out of turn 12 up to the Jungkow and Mika Hakkinen and McLaren are within a few hundred yards of victory in Brazil over the line goes the Finn victory for Hakkinen victory for McLaren second place for Michael Schumacher and the gap between them only 4.9 seconds. Heinz Harold Frentzen should be coming home in third position but the question is who is going to be fourth? Well uh, hopefully there's uh, there's uh, obviously Sh uh, Michael Schumacher cruising up behind the McLaren a, a strong team victory there I'd say for McLaren that long first in definitely gave them track position and uh, definitely gave them the race Now we're watching now for uh, for Frentzen and uh, Ralph uh, sorry Ralph Schumacher and Irvine to come over the line And, uh, well, Michael, other than Michael Schumacher's brilliant drive, quite clearly the McLarens have been the better car through the race. We saw the Ferraris having an advantage in Monaco. But if it stays like this, Schumacher's lead over Hakkinen will be just six World Championship points. Yeah, but I think Ferrari, as I said before, are not going to be too unhappy in view of the fact that they've made no bones about the fact that this is their worst circuit of the year. So, Mika Hakkinen on his last lap as Schumacher is still behind Jarno Trulli in sixth position. Almost a full lap ahead of him on the track, but behind him right here as Mika Hakkinen comes through to win in Spain and pulls... Hello? What's going on? Stopping as he crosses the line. David Coulthard finishes 6.2 seconds behind him in second position. And Michael Schumacher gets four World Championship points for Ferrari. Eddie Irvine will come through to finish in fourth position and take three World Championship points. So, superb for McLaren. They'll be very, very, very happy. Their first... First and second of 1999, 16 constructors' points. Ferrari, as I say, not too unhappy. And uh, hats off, incidentally, again to Jacques Villeneuve and BAR for their fine form early in the race. Well, uh, some minute further down the road, Ralph Schumacher will come across the line for a solid two points there uh, in the Williams.
if the safety car does pull off, we're going to have a mighty exciting finish to this race because there's Swervin Irvin, Eddie Irvine. Now, is the safety car coming in? It's going to be an absolutely fantastic last lap if he does because Hackinen has got Vizzy Keller behind him. No, the safety car goes on and they are now on their 69th lap. The full race distance is... 69 laps, or they will be in a moment when they cross the line now. There's the safety car, and first Hackinen, second Fisichella, third Irvine. That's Badoa, who has long since been lapped, of course. In fact, he's been lapped twice, and he's down in 10th position. And we're on lap 69, and we are indeed seeing Formula One Grand Prix history made. The prospect as... Heights Harold Frenson's very, very broken Jordan is removed from the field of a Grand Prix finishing behind the safety car, which is, frankly, as it should be. Well, hopefully uh, everything is all right with Frenson, but it seems that this information come across from the pit, Murray, that there may have been a brake problem there with the Jordan, which would explain the speed that he went into that barrier. So, Nicka Hackenden leading the touring competitors that remain in this race um, my forecast was about right not that I'm particularly proud of it under the circumstances ten cars are going to finish this race uh, of them only seven will be having completed the full race distance with a victory the third of the season for Mika Hacken and to put him into the lead in the world championship Giancarlo Fisichella is going to finish in second place for six world championship points to add to the seven that he already has. Eddie Irvine, third for Ferrari, a yet another podium position which will reinforce his right to drive for Ferrari again next year, which I believe he very much wants to do. Ralph Schumacher, an excellent fourth after all sorts of problems in practising and qualifying over the last two days. Johnny Herbert, a superb first two World Championship points for himself driving in the Stewart team. And very good news for Stewart, for Ford with the Ford top brass from Detroit here at Montreal. Sixth position will be Pedro Denise, followed by David Coulthard, out of the points. Only one McLaren in the points. Mark Genet, eighth. Olivier Panis and Mika Hakkinen wins in Montreal. The flags wave. He surges across the line. And Fisichella, second. Irvine, third. Ralph Schumacher, fourth. Johnny Herbert, fifth. Pedro Denise, another point for Sauber. because not only is Hackenden going to win, David Coulthard is going to be second, and that means to say that certainly as far as Hungary is concerned, they've overcome the reliability Kremlins of one kind and another, which had affected them in several races this year. Eddie Irvine then is going to settle for four World Championship points and third position. Down out of turn 11 in this 14-turn track, Mika Hakkinen comes, the race is in his pocket, turn 13, the double right-hander into the start and finish straight, and the winner of the Hungarian Grand Prix to the delight of thousands and thousands of Finnish spectators is their hero, Mika Hakkinen, who cruises across the line in front of the joyous McLaren mechanics. That's Mika Salo. He's finishing two laps now. Yes, and Coulthard uh, crosses the line 9.7 seconds behind Hakkinen. Had a very slow lap, as you saw. Good drive from Hakkinen, great drive from Hakkinen, and a great drive from Coulthard, too. Irvine struggled. I thought uh, Frenson was solid, as ever. Barrichello, very strong with a one-stopper in fifth place. Damon Hill, very much hanging on, and... Uh, a well-earned one point for Damon. As you see, Heinz Harold Frenson in the yellow Jordan finishing in fourth position. 
as he came out of the hairpin and look across and see that Michael Schumacher in terms of track distance is far enough behind the McLaren not to be able to do anything about it I believe notwithstanding the fact that Mika Hakkinen is closing up on a couple of tail enders I don't think he'll reach them before the end of the lap because he is coming up to the 130R and there's Ron Dennis waiting to greet his man home and he's going to be truly ecstatic as rightly so everybody in the McLaren team is going to be because here is the flying fin Mika Hakkinen wins the Japanese Grand Prix of 19-99 if he rolls out of the chicken chicane very slowly indeed making absolutely sure and takes the check and flag Mika Hakkinen wins in Japan he is world champion and there is Michael Schumacher and the gap between them has come down to just five seconds Mika was indeed taking it easy and uh, Mika joyfully waved both hands out of the cockpit there's a lot of fins here is painted blue and white they, they're already wearing t-shirts saying Mika Hakkinen world champion 1998 and 99 I said to one of them just before I came into the commentary box you're being a bit optimistic aren't you and he said no no we trust our man he will win well the trust was justified and uh, Mika Hakkinen beats Eddie Irvine in the drivers championship by two points Must be lovely for Hakkinen to see that board. P1, L1, position one, of course. One lap to go, 17.3 seconds ahead of David Coulthard. Barrichello a further 14 and a half seconds down the road. So it's quite a spread out now for the podium players. But I think they'll all be pretty satisfied with their afternoon, given uh, where they were coming from. Indeed, and especially Mika, the quiet, unflappable, pragmatic Mika Hakkinen, 17 seconds ahead of David Coulthard. Their lap times have come down considerably, indicating the fact that they are pacing themselves home. And there's a very, very short distance now between Mika Hakkinen and that wonderful sight for a racing driver. The chequered flag, which means not only that you have finished the race, but that you have, in his case, won it. The Spanish Grand Prix, out of the right hander comes Mika Hakkinen. You can see the crowd moving in the background, the Finnish flags waving there. Into and out of the last corner now comes Mika Hakkinen crossing the line, and it is victory for Hakkinen, McLaren and Mercedes in Spain. And the mass of blue and white flags, it's a very happy, a very relieved Mika Hakkinen. David Coulthard, I'm just looking to see whether, yes, David Coulthard goes through in second position. There he is. So, for the second race in succession, the McLaren team have scored 16 World Championship points in the Constructors' Contest as Rubens Barrichello finishes in third position. Now, is it going to be Ralph Schumacher in the Williams BMW in fourth place in just a few seconds' time? Yes, over the line he goes, and Heights Harold Frenson is 35 seconds down the line. Only six people will have completed the full race distance. As Mika Hakkinen is now on his 71st and last lap, victoriously driving on at the A1 ring in Austria. David Coulthard, there is Hakkinen. David Coulthard is 12 seconds behind him. Rubens Barrichello is catching both of them, but uh, it's academic. He's in third place, 30 seconds over behind Hakkinen. Villeneuve, that magnificent fourth button, is going to be in the points uh, because he uh, won't have to do the 71 laps on account of the fact he's been lapped. And Mika Salo is going to score a point, and Johnny Herbert is just going to miss it in seventh position. So, in the closing stages of the Austrian Grand Prix, up to turn seven comes Mika Hakkinen at about 130 miles an hour, down to turn eight. And in Austria, 
Mika Hakkinen crosses the line to win his 16th Grand Prix. And we look back now for David Coulthard, who is going to be about 12 seconds behind his teammate. There he is, a magnificent, magnificent Austri Austrian Grand Prix for McLaren. 16 Constructors World Championship points. They move ahead of Ferrari. And my goodness, it is mighty, mighty close now in the Drivers' Championship because Michael Schumacher is on 56 points. Uh, Mika Hakkinen is on 48 points and David Coulthard is on 50 points. It's been a brilliant, brilliant copybook victory for Mika Hakkinen, who is almost home. Yes, but all the signs of the weekend was once he had that now typical start of his, he would then be under pressure from uh, Schumacher and Coulthard, but he just waltzed. It took him about three laps to find some grip and some confidence. He's been changing that car constantly through the weekend. And then he just took off, didn't he, with a series of laps that they couldn't even begin to look at. Mika Hakkinen exits the last turn at the Hungaro ring, crosses the line and wins the Hungarian Grand Prix of 2000. His third win of the year with Michael Schumacher second for Ferrari, reducing the gap between himself and Mika Hakkinen a bit by staying ahead of David Coulthard. And we look at Rubens and Barrichello. So the reliability of both the Ferraris and both the McLarens has made things impossible for any other team to get on the podium the first three places. The top non-Ferrari man is going to be Ralph Schumacher in the Williams BMW. And better than that, he could not have hoped to do. So Hakkinen scored 32 points out of a possible 40 in the last four Grand Prix, Murray. That's pretty much what you'd call a world championship charge, isn't it? And, well, who can stop him? He's got so much confidence from the last two years knowing he can pull it out of the bag at the end. And he leaps into the lead of the championship with a performance that was just mesmerising. Yeah, and there's still only six world championship points between the top three. Mika Hakkinen moves into the lead of the world championship by displacing... Michael Schumacher, who's down to second place, and David Coulthard is still very much in for a shout of the World Championship because he's only six points behind Mika Hakkinen, and there are still 50 potential World Championship points to be won. And uh, Michael Schumacher has still got to get past. Well, Mika Hakkinen has driven a magnificent race. He's been on top in Belgium for the whole time. He was quickest in qualifying. He was quickest this morning. He's going to end up winning the race and getting those 10 World Championship points. And that will be his fourth win of the year. So the key point then was Michael Schumacher stopping early for his uh, second stop, having a long run then to the end of the race. Those tyres giving up on him. He knew that from very early stages. He was already trying to cool them down despite being uh, slick tyres on a slick racetrack, finding the damp patches because he really knew he was going to struggle with tyre degradation later on in that stint. Hakkinen pitting some laps later and Michael just could not do enough to fend off a flying Finn who desperately seems to want that third consecutive world championship. And Michael is pushing right to the end, faster in the first sector than Mika Hakkinen, faster in the second sector by half a second than Mika Hakkinen, but the Finn has got it in the bag unless something dreadful happens in the closing few hundred yards of the race as Michael Schumacher comes right up to the rear wing almost of the McLaren Mercedes. Mika Hakkinen exits the bus stop and for the first time in his career, wins the Belgian Grand Prix by 1.1 seconds from Michael Schumacher. But it might just as well have been 1.1 hours from Michael Schumacher. Indeed it does. Mika Hakkinen back at the top for what is going to be his 19th Grand Prix victory and a very welcome one it's going to be. He's going to feel an absolutely liberated man knowing that this time everything has come together for him. Out of Brooklands for the last time, he's just got the double right-hander at Luffield. 
the tremendously quick turn 17 which is Woodcote Corner 155 miles an hour and for the first time Mika Hakkinen wins the British Grand Prix he just cruises across the line and takes the chicken flag luxuriating in every wheel turn well that's a hat-trick for McLaren then even if Coulthard couldn't pull it off this afternoon Mika Hakkinen scores Three consecutive British Grand Prix wins for McLaren Mercedes. Ben's second place man then, Michael Schumacher. I'll have those six points. Thank you very much. That puts him, of course, then 37 points in the lead of the World Championship with a mere 60 available for the rest of the season. The flying fin from Helsinki is on his last lap. Looking magnificently good for his 20th World Championship win. Ten World Championship points to lift the fin ahead of Montoya, who has retired to a fifth position in the World Championship. That won't please Mika particularly, but another win when he's had so many problems this year is going to be great for this quiet, popular Finn, who is now entering turn 13. This is the last corner of the last lap, and Mika Hakkinen takes the chicken flag to win the American Grand Prix. A superlatively good victory. And is he pleased? Yes, indeed, he. Clap, clap, clap. Well done, Mika. And there's Rubens sitting disconsolately with his back to the pit wall and Mika even stops the car, he's so pleased with himself. Yes, his 20th Grand Prix victory, well earned. We said at the beginning, would he use that anger and frustration at losing a, a line on the grid in a positive way or would he trip over somebody he threw anger into the first corner? Well, we now know the answer. So a stirring victory for Mika Hakkinen, Schumacher then second. Coulthard just nine tenths down in the end for third place over the line and uh, a great win.